refresh our memory and go back to the origins of Yes, we find John Anderson and Chris Squire and some other guys, uh, Bill and Tony and Peter, right, f actually formed the band. Or you were the, were you the originator? I, I was possibly the, the instigator of the crime. Um, first of all, I was uh, working in a in a bar, having worked for five years with groups, with with a particular group, and uh, I found myself in London, and. Uh, I was working in a, in a bar where, which was frequented by musicians uh, that were very popular at that time and are still popular, uh, like the Nice and Terry Reid of, of this world. It's, it's kind of, it was next to the Marquee Club. It, Marquee Club is in London. It's a very, very famous club. And uh, I used to sweep up and collect glasses and things like that. It was like right down to the roofs because I, I just wanted to... F uh, look around the groups in, in London and in the hope of joining uh, one of them. Um, as it happened, I couldn't really find... Um, I was a bit dissatisfied with what was happening on the musical scene for groups that really hadn't got going, and that's the only kind of group you can join when you're an unknown singer. Uh, just an ordinary uh, pro group that just keeps together, if you like. And the only group that really turned me on was the Nice with Keith Emerson and the Jackson and Blinky Davison and they didn't need a singer <laughs> I, I, I was too frightened to ask because they were to me they were very very um, very well known and very in, in London at any rate they were pretty well known all over England and so I was uh, searching for a band to join I joined the gun for, for a period of about a month which uh, was three weeks rehearsals and two gigs they were a little more interested in money than, than, than just playing gigs and uh, that was our difference of opinion that's why I left and as I said before they kicked me out one of the two or one of the three and uh, then uh, possibly about a month later I met Chris in the bar that I was working and uh, we had a quick chat and, and realised we were uh, interested in each other's ideas the day after we got together and we were all sweetness and started thinking about other things we could get into we started doing a lot of arrangements uh, and one of the main points that we, we we decided to get a band together on was to make uh, a kind of harmony group but with a very very strong and uh, organized backing arranged backing consequently we did a lot of Beatles songs which were very well known songs anyway and and uh, they appealed pretty well to the public who were playing at the time. Uh, Bill joined through an advert in the Melody Maker and uh, Peter and Tony joined through Friends and uh, as I said I borrowed about £700 $700 to get the band on the road which meant a month's rehearsal, five, ten dollars each a week and then it, uh, a couple, a few dollars on equipment and things uh, I'm only talking in dollars because it's American, isn't it? It helps. And uh, so we got on the road and did a lot of gigs and then recorded our first album, which didn't do too well because of bad, re bad production, which we weren't, we weren't aware of. We, we just had the energy to go in and make these, this music. And I think the energy kind of c climbs through the bad production on the first album. It's not a great album, but it's, there's a lot of enthusiasm there anyway. Um, we got into the second album, um, I felt that uh, Peter wasn't um, pushing as hard as possible, possibly he could have done at that time, so we introduced strings to like make it a little bit better album than it would have been without strings. It wouldn't have been a, a good album without the strings, and it's, it, as it happened it didn't turn out to be a good album, a great album anywhere anyway because the, the string arrangements were very good in some parts and pretty bad in others but it was a, a, a an idea that I had at that time that the band wasn't so wasn't functioning so well so we'd use strings to try and uh, make it better album and, and did a few more tours of England uh, we decided that we, we needed m more of a, a stronger individual in the band to kind of help push the band along. Uh,
consequently we got Steve in and uh, Peter left to, to do his own things and Steve over the last two and a half years has really blossomed out into one of the strongest well, we're all strong parts of the band now we're, we're, I think we're all individually um, uh, appreciated if you like there's nobody stands out everybody enjoys the, whole, the band as a whole but you know uh, it was one of the lucky breaks that we had to find Steve. The time we met him, he was with a band called Bodas, who were a very good band. That, I saw Steve play down in the speakeasy once, and I always remembered him. And when we were thinking about getting a guitarist, Tony Colton, who produced our second album, uh, mentioned Steve Howe was, like, really hot. So we got hold of him, and we, we had a, a rehearsal, which we played for five minutes and talked for about five hours, you know. It was one of them instant things that you really get high on, you know, and uh, so we carried on and got in, we, we, we went through a lot of management hassles, every band has terrible man management hassles and your, your first managers are always terrible because they're, they're very inexperienced and they're not capable of accepting what you're trying to do, they just think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a laugh, you know, whereas a business part of a group is the management, it's got to be run business like or else uh, promoters are going to lose out, people are going to lose out, the group's going to lose out. It's got to be very well organised to make sure that there is a good, uh, not so much a product to sell, but there's a good show coming to, you know, coming to America or, or playing in England. We, we've always tried to maintain um, a, a very good high standard of sound and, and so on, you know, and good equipment, which is and you need money to get this, so you need management to get the money from from the record companies and so on. Uh, then we recorded the Yes album. We, we, that was our first breakthrough for us because we, we produced it ourselves and we were very, very um, relieved that we could produce something uh, like the Yes album. It was it was a little feather in our cap. We felt really proud of it. We started thinking more and more about um, our music and getting more and more involved so that <clears throat> by the time it came to do Fragile uh, we felt that we could we should be expanding a little more sound wise consequently Tony uh, wasn't really into uh, playing uh, Mellotron moves or anything like that because he wasn't sure of the c uh, capabilities I, I think and uh, we'd heard about Rick Wakeman who was pretty unhappy with the strobes and uh, he would really love to join the band, so I think it was the first tour we did of America. On the way back, we, we decided to get hold of Rick and see if he was willing to join the band. Only on the presumption that he was going to play uh, Mellotrons and Moogs and a lot more keyboard sounds to, to like develop the, the scope of the band. So we got Rick in and recorded Fragile. That brings us, us up to the last couple of tours we've done of America. Uh, I think the, f the, the time we played in Philadelphia, we were possibly very unlucky that it was one of the first gigs we played when we got in America. Most of the equipment was broke, but the audience in Philadelphia was so good to us, you know, we felt so kind of um, sad that we hadn't put on the show we, we felt we could put on. And we were so kind of um, exasperated, or whatever the word might be, to, to feel that so many people would enjoy our music when it wasn't... Uh, as hot as we can do it, you know, and uh, so we just look forward to playing back in Philadelphia and like the other night we really enjoyed ourselves, you know, it still wasn't tops for us but we still enjoyed it and, and the audience seemed to enjoy it very much and we were very proud to be able to play there really, it, you know, with the help of you getting the records together, it, it, you know, it gives us a sense of uh, belonging that somebody does want to see us. You know, a lot of people come to the gigs, but when you're treated uh, possibly with a little more respect and a lot of people do turn out to see you, you want to put on the best show you've ever put on in your life, and that's what we always strive for. And uh, before we came on the tour that we're on now, um, we, we just got to the final stages of our fifth album, which is called Close to the Edge, and uh, Bill, who'd been discussing with me um, over the last six months that he wanted to spread out and play with other people and I I'd, I'd said to him well, if you if you said to him if you can wait maybe uh, till the end of the year 
I'm sure, um, <coughs> yes, as, as, as an idea, we'll be able to relax and develop on easier lines rather than, like, we spend 24 hours a day thinking about yes and, and every day of the year. We've had two weeks off in the last four years as a holiday. We had two weeks off about uh, just before we started the new album. And Bill <coughs> had spent a lot of time with Bob. Bob had lived with Bill for a while. So Bob Fritt seemed to be his next step on his musical uh, journey. And uh, I, I said to him, I said, I can dig the idea very much you joining, but I, I, I just um, ease off for the moment. See what we're trying to do <coughs> musically and get involved in it. I'm sure you'll uh, get everything out that you're trying to, what you think you, you can get out with Bob. Uh, he said he still wanted to join with Bob, but later on this year. So I said, well, Alan White has been very close to us for maybe six months now. He'd done a couple of sessions with him, with me and Steve, and we got to know him very well, got to like him very well. And um, consequently, when, when Bill said he wanted to leave, I, I said, well, that's, that's cool, because I know Alan can do everything that uh, we'd ever want. So Alan was so excited to join, he wanted to start right away, you see. So we had to say to Bill, well, listen, Bill, Alan's coming in now, you know, and we're going to get on with it, because uh, it means more to us to keep the band, to go over, knowing that the band is a unit, to go and play in America, like this tour we're doing now. And after the first four gigs, we were really having a good time with Alan, you know, and we're very, very happy with him. He's excellent. You, you probably realise we were really vibing off him the other night. You know, it's it's something you, you oh yeah, yeah, he's excellent, excellent, and uh, we're happy. Bill's I, I rang Bill uh, a couple of days ago, asked him how he was, and he's very happy now. And uh, <laughs> and um, he seems to be uh, settling into starting again because that's what he asked to do, you know, he's getting together with five musicians that he doesn't know, he's never worked with before, and he's got to sit down and start a group again. And this is what he wants to do, he, he's a little bit of a masochist, I think. But he, I think he'll learn a lot by doing it, he'll learn all the little things that were bugging him at the back of his mind. It, maybe uh, he felt that um, we were getting too successful for what he was putting into it. He probably thought he, he, he shouldn't be so successful so soon, so he wants to start again, so that... Wait a minute, soon? How many years? Yeah, four, but, was but, it four years? Yeah, Bill, Bill's, Bill's only 20, 22, okay. and uh, hasn't been playing so long, really, uh, relative to like, me and Steve. I've been at it since, what, 10 years nearly, and Steve's the same, you know, and... Uh, but we don't really consider uh, we're successful yet because of our music. Our music is a success. If when, when we start making something that we feel is successful, uh, it's a very personal thing. Is music and uh, people can go out and buy records, but there's no point in saying, "Oh, we're hits. We're we're we're, we're there. We're, we're successful." Until you know deep inside that you've made something really heavy. The nearest we've got to it now is close to the edge, which you heard the other night. And and it's and it's developing. We're, we're quite away from it. Yeah, maybe next year, end of next year. I don't know. It's very difficult to say.